So this is lab one. And uh, like I said, we are, are going to grab a data set of, of these conversations that are happening between people. What we plan to do is to summarize these dialogues. And so think of a support dialogue between you and your customers. Maybe the end of the month, you want to summarize all of the issues that uh, your customer support team has dealt with that month. Some other things to note now, I'm zoomed in a little bit uh, much here, but you could see that we have eight CPUs, we have 32 gigs of RAM. We're using Python 3. And these are some of the pip installs. So if I do a shift enter here, this is going to start doing the Python library installs. And we see that we're going to be using PyTorch. We are installing a library called Torch Data, which helps with the data loading and uh, some other aspects for PyTorch specific to data sets. And so here we see transformers. This is a library from Hugging Face, a really cool company uh, who has built a whole lot of open source tooling for large language models. Uh, they also have built this library, this Python library called Datasets that can load in many of the common public data sets that people use to either train models, fine tune models, or just experiment with. And so if you click shift enter there, this will run for a bit. Now keep in mind, this does take a few minutes to load. Uh, this, this whole notebook um, uh, will depend on these libraries. So make sure that these do install. Uh, just ignore these errors, these warnings. We always try to uh, do things to mitigate these errors and warnings. They always show up. Uh, things will still work. So just trust me, these libraries and these notebooks do run. We've pinned all of the Python library versions so that as new versions come out, it will not potentially break these notebooks. So um, just keep that in mind. This does say to restart the kernel. Um, I don't think you have to do that. Let's just keep on going. So now we're gonna actually do the uh, like imports here. So this is going to import functions called load data set. This is going to import some of the models um, and tokenizers that are needed to accomplish our lab here. We're going to use this data set called dialog sum. And this is a public data set that Transformers and specifically the data sets library does expose and uh, does give us access to. So all we do is call load data set that was imported up above and we pull in this data set. Now, from here on out, we're going to explore some of the data. We're going to um, actually try to summarize uh, with just the FLAN T5 base model, okay? so. Before we get there though, let me load the data set. Let's take a look at some of the examples of this data set. So here's a, a sample dialogue between person one and person two. So uh, person one says, what time is it, Tom? So it looks like person two's name is Tom actually. Just a minute, it's 10 to nine by my watch uh, and on and on. And so here's the baseline human summary. This is what a human has labeled this conversation to be a summary of that conversation. And now we will try to improve upon that summary by using our model, right? So again, no model has even been loaded yet. This is purely just the actual data. So here's the conversation. And then, you know, think of this like this is the training sample and then this is what a human has labeled it. And then we will compare the human summary which is what we're uh, considering to be the baseline, we will compare that to what the model predicts is the summary, right? The model will actually generate a summary. Here's a second example. You can see it's got some familiar terms here that uh, like a lot of us are familiar with, CD-ROM, painting program uh, for your software. Now, here's where we're actually gonna load the model. So Flan T5, we spoke about in the videos. This is a very nice general purpose model that can do a whole lot of tasks. And today we'll be focused on Flan T5's ability to summarize conversations. After loading the model, we have to load the tokenizer. Now these are all coming from the Hugging Face Transformers library. 
And so just to give you an example, before Transformers came along, we had to write a lot of this code ourselves. And depending on the type of model, there's now many, many different language models, and some of them do things very differently than some of the other models. And so there was a lot of sort of bespoke right, like ad hoc uh, libraries out there that were all trying to do the, uh, similar things. And then Hugging Face came along and really has a, a very well optimized uh, like implementation of all of these. Now, here's the tokenizer. This is what's going to be used to convert the raw text from our conversation into our vector space that can then be processed by our Flan T5 model. And so just to give you an idea, let's just take a sample sentence here. What time is it, Tom? The first sentence from our conversation up above. We see the encoded sentence is actually these numbers here. Uh, and then if you go to decode it, we see that this decodes right back to the original. So the tokenizer's job is to convert raw text into numbers. Those numbers point to a set of vectors or the embeddings as they're often called that are then used in uh, mathematical operations like our deep learning, backpropagation, um, our linear algebra, all that fun stuff. All right, now let's run this cell here and continue to explore. Okay, now that we've loaded our model and we've loaded our tokenizer, we can run through some of these conversations through the Flan T5 model and see what does uh, this model actually generate as a summary for these conversations. And so here again, we have the conversation. Here again is the baseline summary. And then we see without any prompt engineering at all, just taking the actual conversation, passing it to our Flan T5 model, it doesn't do a very good job summarizing. We see it's 10 to nine. That's not very helpful. There's some more details in this conversation that are not coming out at this point. Same with the conversation about our CD-ROM. Baseline summary is person one teaches person two how to upgrade the software and hardware in person two's system. The model generated person one is thinking about upgrading their computer. So again, lots of details in this original conversation that do not come through these summaries. So let's see how we can improve on this. In the lesson, you learned how to use instructions to tell your model what you're trying to do with the data that you're passing it. And so here's an example. And this is called in-context learning and specifically uh, zero-shot inference with an instruction. And so here's the instruction, which is summarize the following conversation. Here is the actual conversation. And then we are telling the model where it should print the summary, which is going to be after this word summary. Okay, now this seems very, very simple. And let's see how it does. Let's see if things do get better. So not much better here. Okay, so the baseline is still person one is in a hurry. Tom tells person two there's plenty of time. And then the zero shot in context learning with a prompt, it just says the train is about to leave. So again, not the greatest. And then here is the zero shot for the computer sample. It's still thinking that person one is trying to upgrade. So not much better. So let's keep going here. There is a different prompt that we can use here, which is where we just say dialogue colon. Okay, now these are really up to you. This is the prompt engineering side of, prompt, of, of these large language models, where we're trying to find the best prompt, and in this case, just a zero shot inference. So no fine tuning of the model, no nothing. All we're doing is just finding different instructions to pass and seeing if the model does any better with slightly different phrases. So let's see how this does. So really this is sort of the inverse of before where here we're just saying, here's the dialogue. And then afterward we're saying, what was going on up in that dialogue? And let's see if this does anything better. So Tom is late for the train. So it's picking that up, but still not great. Uh, here we see person one, you could add a painting program, person two, that would be a bonus. So a little bit better. Um, it's not exactly right, but it's getting better. It's at least picking up some of the nuance. Now, as part of in-context learning, you learn there's something called one shot and then few shots. So let's get a sample of that here. Let's get hands on with one shot and then few shots. So earlier we were doing zero shot. That means we're not giving it any samples of prompt and then completion. All we're doing is just giving it a prompt. We are asking the model to do something and seeing what the model generates. With one shot and then few shot, we will actually give it 
samples that are correct, so or or that use the human baseline. And that then puts the model into, you know, gives the model a little bit more information to work on. Okay, so let's see how one shot works here. And so all we're doing is just taking a full example, including the summary from the human baseline, then giving it a second example, but without the actual summary. And that's the dialogue that we want the model to summarize. So let's see how this looks. So one shot means I'm giving it one complete example, including the correct answer as dictated by the human here, the human baseline. Then we give it a second example and ask the model what's going on. So let's see how we do here. So uh, here we're just gonna do the upgrade software. Uh, person one wants to upgrade, person two wants to add a painting program, person one wants to add a CD-ROM. So I think it's a little better and let's keep going. There's something called few shot inference as well. Now, some of you might be asking, well, this seems like cheating because we're actually giving it uh, one answer and then asking it. And it's not really cheating. It's more of you're helping the model, you know, help itself. Now, in future lessons and in future labs, we will actually fine tune the model where we can go back to the zero shot inference, which is what you would normally think of as a good language model. But here we're just building up some of the intuition here. Okay, and so keep in mind, this is a very, very inexpensive way to try out these models and, and to even figure out which model should you fine tune. So uh, we chose Flan T5 because it works across a large number of tasks. But if you have no idea how a model is, if you just get it off, off of some uh, model hub somewhere, these are the first steps. So prompt engineering, zero shot, one shot, few shot is almost always the first step when you're trying to learn the language model um, that you've been handed. And data set, also very data set specific as well and task specific. So few shot means that we're giving three full examples, including the human baseline summary. One, two, three, and then a fourth, but without the human summary. Yes, even though we have it, we're just exploring our model right now. And we're saying, tell us what that fourth dialogue is, that summary. And just ignore some of these errors. Some of these sequences are a bit larger than the, the 512 context length of the model. Uh, typically, you would probably want to filter out any of these inputs that are uh, larger than 512, but here it still does a pretty good job. So here we see a case where the, the few shot didn't do much better than the one shot. And so this is something that you want to pay attention to because in practice, people often try to just keep adding more and more shots, five shots, six shots. Typically, in my experience, above five or six shots, so full prompt and then completions, you really don't gain much after that. Either the model can do it or it can't do it, and you know, going above five or six. Here we see for this particular uh, sample that really one shot was uh, good enough. Now, the last part of this lab is gonna be fun. This is where you can actually play with some of these configuration parameters that you learn during the lessons. Things like the sampling, uh, temperature. You can play with these, try out, and gain your intuition on how these things can impact what's actually generated by the model. In some cases, for example, by raising the temperature up above, uh, you know, towards one or even uh, closer to two, you will get very, very creative type of responses. If you lower it down, I, I believe point 0.1 is the minimum for the Hugging Face implementation anyway of this generation config class here that's used um, when you actually generate. I can pass generation config right here. Uh, if you go down to point 0.1, that will actually make the response more conservative and will oftentimes give you the same response over and over. If you go higher, I believe actually 2.0 is the highest. If you try 2.0, that will start to give you some, you know, very wild responses. It's kind of fun. You should try it.